Grace Baptist Church. We are so glad you've chosen to worship with us this morning. We just want to take a few minutes to let you know about some things going on in the church. Tonight, we will be showing I Can Only Imagine at 6 p.m. in the gym. Popcorn and drinks will be provided. This Wednesday from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m., we will be feeding the Tullahoma teachers and staff in the gym. Volunteers are needed to help us show our appreciation to our educators. Please contact one of our staff members for more information on how you can help. Just a reminder that July 29th is Class Change Sunday for preschool, children, and youth life groups. We need worship child care providers as soon as possible. This need is for the 8.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. service. You will be providing child care only one Sunday per month. Please see Melinda Brown for more information. We are so glad you've chosen to worship with us this morning. Whether you've been here your entire life or you're visiting with us for the first time, we hope you have an amazing day here at Grace Baptist Church. All right, can we say this, this scripture together? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. We want God to hear us. We want him to forgive us, to, to, uh, to cleanse us. So I'm going to invite just everyone that, that will just come to the, to, the, to the altar if you can, or if not, just, just uh, where you are, if you want to kneel at, the, at your seat there, or, um, or just kneel in your heart. But let's take, go to the Lord in prayer right now. Anybody that wants to come forward. Lord, we desire forgiveness. We desire healing. We desire to see your face. We desire to, for you to hear us from heaven, Lord. Hear our desperate cry. Lord, speak to us. Speak to us, Lord. We're your people ready to, to hear, ready to obey. Lord, use this time of worship this day, Lord, this message today, Lord, that, that we would be your servants, your vessels, clean and holy, ready to be, be used. Lord, we want to lift up the lost all around us in this community. Lord, maybe our friends or neighbors or family members, Lord, we lift them to you, Lord. Show us how we can reach them, how you can reach them through us. Use us, Lord. Use us, Lord. Let us honor you with our worship this day, Lord. Not just lip service, but, but true heartfelt service to you as we seek your face. Hear us from heaven. Let us humble ourselves before you. We are your people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Can we stand, please? Let this be your prayer him to move in our hearts, move in our country, move in this place. I see your glory covering the earth, Lord, just as the waters are covering the sea. 
I see the millions coming to salvation. I see revival, fire in the land. I see the lost, the nameless ones remember. I see the widows shouting out your praise. I see the friendless, loved and celebrated. Orphans fulfilling, Lord, your calling on their lives. Do it, Lord, do it, Lord, do it, Lord, we are praying. Do it, Lord, do it, that your glory may be seen. Do it, Lord, do it, Lord, do it, Lord, we are praying. Do it, Lord, do it, that your glory may be seen. I see forgiveness overtaking hatred. Pride and prejudice now giving way to love. I see depression replaced with joy and gladness. And Satan's lies now bowing to the truth. Do it, Lord, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord, we are praying. Do it, Lord, do it, that your glory may be seen. Do it, Lord, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord, we are praying. Do it, Lord, do it, that your glory may be seen. This is our prayer, O oh God. This is our desperate cry. In these days that we're living now, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. This is our prayer, O oh God. God, we thank you that we get to come into a place like this and just lift high the name of Jesus. So God, as we come into this place here this morning, God, I pray that we can cast out all distractions and things that are happening in our lives, that we can come to a place like this and just simply focus on the person of Jesus Christ. 
God, I pray that it's everything that is sung, everything that is said that comes from here. God, I pray as people look this direction, may they not see man, may they see Jesus. So God, fall afresh on this place here this morning. Speak your words, your truth. God, I pray that that we are open to hear what you have to say to us this morning. God, I pray if there's someone in this building this morning who doesn't know Jesus as their Savior, that, God, they don't miss an opportunity here this morning. So, God, have your way. Fall afresh and anew this morning. Speak, God, because your people are listening. In the sweet, holy, precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, thank you guys. You can be seated, man. We're so excited and glad you're here this morning. Let me give you a couple of things this week, just a reminder, refresher that you need to know about. Don't forget tonight, uh, we'll be showing the movie I Can Only Imagine. So make sure you're back here tonight in the GOC. Um, We'll have popcorn, Coke, that kind of stuff. So make sure you're here to be a part of that. It's going to be an awesome time. Um, We also think for preschoolers, they'll be over in the preschool building and and there'll be a time for them as well. So come on, let's have some fun tonight and and, and watch this incredible movie. Um, If you are a parent, of a teenager, um, I need your undivided attention for one moment, just really quickly. If you look in your worship guide, you'll see the thing that says students. Um, there is a thing there that said 8118 FCA kickoff event at Tullahoma High School. We found out Thursday after these things had been printed that Coach Olive had to move that event um, because of a conflict with a speaker. So that event is going to be on the next Wednesday, the 8th. All right. So bring your students here on Wednesday, the 1st. And then on that follow Wednesday, on the 8th, we'll have that, that in, the, in the worship guide next week. But on the 8th, bring your students to the high school at 6 o'clock, all right? I'll have to be there a little earlier, so there'll be nobody here to bring them over. So make sure you drop your kids off at the high school at 6 o'clock for that event out at the football field. Hopefully it doesn't rain and we can stay out there, um, but still drop them there. Um, we'll feed them that night, and there'll be a, a, some worship and, and a speaker. Be back at the high school to be ready to pick your kids up about 7.30, 7.45-ish, depending on how long this, winded the speaker is. So, again, that is on the 8th, all right? The first, bring them back here. Really quickly, I want you to see something there that's coming called the Awakening Youth Conference that, that we have stepped out on faith, and we're going to be putting this thing on, and that's coming on September the 9th through the 12th. You may have seen some of that going around Facebook um, this week. Uh, that event is going to be for 6th grade through college students, um, adults. If you want to help and serve in that area, um, see me or Noah, and we can find some place. But this is strictly for our 6th co- our through college students. Um, there will be no child care that week. So if you're a coming adult and you have smaller children, um, it's your responsibility to find child care for them that week because there will be nothing here. And we're trying, don't take this as being rude, but this is 6th grade through college. All right. Um, Not a shot, but we don't want third graders and those kind of things running around. We're trying to keep this strictly for our our teenagers, Um, because if you know anything about the school system man, our students are in a desperate need of an awakening. And that's what we're praying. So I'm, I'm asking you to partner with us over these next several weeks as we begin to pray for what God is going to do in the lives of the students here um, on that event. So if you can't come and help serve and those kind of things, but we'll covet your prayers. Um, and, and again, it's a huge step of faith that we're taking here because it's going to be a huge um, cost to it. And we don't know where that money is coming from. Sometimes we just step out on faith and say, God, you know what you're going to do. So you have your way and we're going to be your servants stepping out and doing what you're telling us to do. So be praying for that event that's coming up uh, um, then. Man, this week, Pastor Tim is on vacation. Um, him and his family have taken off and they're hiding um, for a week as a well-deserved break. And so you guys be praying for them that they can just kind of refreshing can kind of get away for a little while. Um, and on Tuesday, um, if you're a praying church, I hope you are. Um, but on Tuesday, I'll be leaving for Alaska to be speaking at a youth conference out there. Um, so just be praying that, that God will have his way and, and students' lives will be changed. And, and so just be praying for that. If you need anything this week, Michael and, and Gary are around. Call the church office. Um, and speaking of this week, if you are available to help on Wednesday as we feed the teachers um, here, it, it'll be over in the gym. If you can help in any kind of way, it's from 1130 to about 130. Um, I know some of you say, well, I can take my lunch break, but I ain't got two hours. Cool. If you've got 30 minutes, come help us for 30 minutes. That would, that would be awesome. Um, if you can help set up, be here about 1030. 
and Carrie will point you in the direction um, of how you can help and how you can serve. But again, if you can only give us 30 minutes throughout that time frame, come on, we'll take it. You can help serve drinks or whatever that may be, okay? Or maybe just a smiling face that you can walk around to these teachers and just give them a high five and a hug and tell them how awesome they are and how much we really appreciate what they're doing for our students, all right? So if you can help in any one of those ways, that would be awesome and we greatly appreciate it. This morning, um, we have a treat. Uh, since Tim is out of town, our guest speaker is Jay Barbier. Um, Jay works with the uh, Tennessee Baptist Mission Board. And again, I, I'm still going to call that place a TVC forever. But um, he, he's working there. He's a youth specialist there. Um, I met him about five months ago. And so as he got come on and knew this job, we've been working together for over those last five or six months trying to put on Super Summer and Impact and, and those, those camps, trying to get all those things together. And I told the first service that, you know, you meet those people sometimes in your life that when, as soon as you meet them, it's like, man, there's that instant connection. Like right away, you're going to love this guy and you're going to work well together. Well, that wasn't Jay, um, and but so I, I got to tell you a quick story about Jay, and then and then we'll move on. You guys ever been to Gatlinburg, Tennessee? Anybody been to Gatlinburg? Um, he's dropping his head right now, going, "No, you're really not." Yes, I am. Um, well, in Gatlinburg, anybody been to a place called the pan, the Pancake Pantry? Anybody been there? That is like heaven on earth, isn't it? The place is lovely. Well, really quickly on myself before I tell the story about Jay, I ordered these pancakes, and they were heavenly, but right to the side of them, there was like this. Big, fluffy, white goodness. And in my mind, I'm thinking, that's whipped cream. It wasn't. Because I took a spoon thinking, this is going to be good. I put it in my mouth, and yeah, I just put a spoonful of butter in my mouth. And it was like that, that instant gag kind of reflex of this is happening. So I, I, I sucked down a whole huge spoonful of butter. But that ain't what made the story even great is, although that's pretty awesome, but we get to the end, and Jay's like, hey, I got it. Don't worry, guys. Hey, I, I, got, I got breakfast this morning. It's on me. I'm like, dude, you're awesome. You're, you're a wonderful man, and so, so we walk on out out of the waiting outside as Jay's waiting in line, and he comes back out and going, um, a uh, desperate moment right now, and I'm like, all right, what's happening? He said, anybody got cash on them? Apparently, this is like a cash-only place, no cards allowed, in our generation, we don't carry cash for no circumstances whatsoever. So it was like, we're fixing me washing dishes. And luckily, Noah was standing by with cash. And so Noah was able to save the day. And without that, we would have been working at the pancake pantry um, for the rest of that day trying to pay off our bill. But now, seriously, man, I love this guy. We've worked great together over the, over the last several months um, trying to plan these things. And you guys are in for a treat hearing him speak here this morning. I know he's going to do a great job. Did a great job in the first service. And you guys are really going to enjoy Jay this morning. But if you would, take a few moments just to stand and shake a few hands those around you. Here we go. Let's sing together. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. Own griefs, but sweat drops of blood for mine. 
Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. You dance over me while I am You sing all around, but I never hear the sound. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Me. You dance over me while I am unaware. You sing all around, but I never hear the sound. Lord, I'm amazed. Love. 
Good morning, church. That was good. Y'all give it up for the worship team. Again, my name is Jay Barbier. I work with the Tennessee Baptist Mission Board. Thank you for being a cooperating church. I want to send greetings from our executive director, Dr. Randy Davis. Uh, because the church is like you, because of your faithfulness, because of your giving, not only are people being impacted here because you're willing to take the name of Jesus to your community, but because of giving, you're able to reach people to the ends of the earth. And so I want to thank you for that. Guys, that's what we're about. I want to kind of share a little story with you. Uh, you'll get to know me as I preach, uh, but I need somebody to be a willing vessel. You know what, too? Is anybody in this room hungry? Come on, brother. You come down here. Yes, fantastic. Hey, no jokes, though, right? All right. Here you go. My hands are clean. I just washed them. All right. Just take a third step and just sit down. Anybody else? Anybody hungry? Student? I had just had some students tell me they wanted to. Any kids want a chocolate donut? Like a chocolate donut for real? Hey, come here, Joe Bro. You come down here. Look at this. How do you like this excitement? Come here, brother. I, don't, I can't tell you if he's not going to bite you. Just take that donut and sit down. Dude, enjoy this. Hey, what is it about like a chocolate donut? I don't know about you, but that's something that just, it makes me a little weak in my knees. If I hear somebody talk about a chocolate donut, I'm like, mmm. You know, my wife played a sick joke on me one time. Uh, I had a hard day at work. I was going through a, going on a diet at the time. Uh, you see, they don't judge me. I used to weigh like 800 pounds. And so you're like, wow, man, you're really fit now. Uh, got home from work, and I entered the door. And as soon as I entered the door, it's like, whew, got weak in my knees a little bit. Chocolate chip cookie smell. You ever had that? Like, you get home, and it's like... You know how that grocery stores play that sick joke on us? As soon as you enter the store, you either smell chips, some kind of baking product, or bacon. You can't deny any of these smells. You have to go, and you have to experience it. You have to get it right then and there. I get home, and I'm like, man, I smell the cookies. I want the cookies. Nothing in life will satisfy me until I get these cookies. And I said, Natalie, my wife's name is Natalie. I said, where are the cookies at? I need to just have one. She says, I don't have any cookies. She said, oh, oh, I got a new candle. <laughs> I don't think that's funny. <laughs> I was mad. Bitterness and anger starts dwelling from within because it's not right. It's not fair. The only way it would satisfy me is if I went and grabbed that candle and I just tasted the wax in the fire. No, that's not going to be good. It's a sick joke. That's not what we're supposed to do. When you, when you smell something, you're supposed to experience it, taste it. Just like this, I could talk to y'all about chocolate donuts all day, and it's not going to really satisfy you unless you were one of these guys sitting down eating it. It don't matter how much I tell you about it, but until you taste it, until you, you, you know it, it's like that, that's when you get to experience it. But how many of us are like this with our faith? Man, we might talk the talk, but can we walk the walk? Thank you, guys. Hey, Jojo, you, or Joe Bro, whatever your name is, enjoy that. Thank you so much for helping out, man. Hopefully, y'all didn't have any kind of food allergies. Thank y'all. It takes unbelievable effort to eat a donut. I'm going to tell y'all a little story, and I want this to be an experience for you. Because I'm hoping every time you open the Bible that you put this into real life, that you really experience the Bible. Put yourself into the story because the Bible is real. The Bible is the Word of God. If, if you ever want God to speak to you, all you have to do is read the Word of God and God's voice will come upon you. You might not hear it audibly, but you will feel the presence of God. God's word is his still, small voice that speaks to us. And it's one of my favorite passages of scripture is Mark chapter 2, 
Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. If you have your Bibles, if you want to go ahead and start turning there. But I'm going to need, I need a small willing vessel that somebody that would be willing is preferably a small male or female, as a, like a child or a youth, that would be willing to come and get inside of this sleeping bag. I won't cover you up. This is not a magic trick. There won't be any swords, anything like that. Anybody that's willing, because I would hate to put Matt up in this bag. <laughs> so I need somebody, preferably somebody with like shorts or pants on, no dresses. Anybody. All right, Joe Bro. look, nobody else is going to uh, volunteer. I need you to come back over here. In the back, I just saw the head go, there you are. Now I need four men. Hey, if you think you're a man in this church and you, you know you got some muscle and you, you don't want your man card to be revoked, all right, Joe Bro, go ahead and get it in this thing. No, yeah, feet first. I thought you were about to dive in. Yeah. All right. Get snug as a buck. All right, now just lay down. All right, I need three more. I got the manly man right here. Three more guys. Nobody else has a man card. All right, women, if you have a stud next to you, send that stud up here. I got one more. I got, oh, there you are. Look, the beard. Yeah, I can feel the presence of this man coming here now. Just one more. No other men? There you go. We got four men. All right, now, don't do anything yet. I just want you to look at this fine specimen in his uh, burrito. I want to talk to you about a story of Jesus coming on the scene, and he's going everywhere he goes. He is just, people are flooding to him. Can you imagine that? If Jesus were to come to Tullahoma, what's going to happen? Everybody in town, whether you like him or not, you're going to flood to hear him because everybody talks about Jesus. Same things going on all throughout uh, the land. And Jesus is coming into this house, and when he comes to this house, so many people flooded into this house, nobody could fit in the, in the, even to the door anymore. Well, there, there was these four friends that they knew about Jesus. They heard the stories of Jesus. They witnessed miracles. But they had a friend that could not walk. They had a friend that the government didn't take care of. There was no subsidies. There weren't anything being taken care of by this family, this man that he had to be brought places and just sat by doorpost so that people might give him some alms. But these four friends, they thought so much of their friend. They loved their friend. And what this is called, this is called faith in action. Love in action. And these four friends picked up. I want y'all to take each corner. Take little Joe Bro up and just walk around the church. That's okay. Hey, he's uh, sleeping in his burrito. But can you imagine this? Don't let go. Yeah. Don't, please do not crack open the egg. But can you imagine this? That these men were willing to go and pick up their friend. This is nothing that was easy. They probably had to go stop at Walmart or Walgreens and go pick up some supplies because they had a plan ahead. They wanted to bring their friend to this house, and they wanted him to see Jesus. But when they got on the scene, everything changed. There was no more room. But this is what was going on. They picked up their friend, and they brought him. This is not an easy task. Thank you. You can put little Joe Bro down, and he can come out of his burrito, and we're all good. But I'm doing this because I want you to, every time you open up the Word of God, I want you to know that this is a real story. This is a real situation. Thank you all so much. But do you do that? Do you experience the Bible? Because I know that this paralyzed man did. He experienced the healing of Jesus Christ. These four friends had so much faith in Jesus Christ that their influence led this paralytic to Jesus to be healed and to be saved. Do we allow that to happen? Do we allow Jesus to completely take over us? Do we allow the message of Jesus to impact us so much that we go to impact and influence others? Or we just sit on our keisters and not say a word? Pray with me. 
God, I want to thank you. God, I want to thank you that we get to experience you. It's not something we can just hear about or talk about. But God, when we call on your name for salvation, we get all of you and all of us. God, we experience you. God, God, we have salvation through the blood and righteousness of Jesus Christ. God, I pray that today's message, these every hearer, God, they would see Jesus. God, you would hide me behind your cross. God, that my name would never be remembered or lifted or elevated, but God, the name of Jesus, the name that saves, would be talked about, would be desired, and God, your Holy Spirit would go all over this place and anybody that listens. So God, do a work, and I pray you would take our brokenness and heal us. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. But can you imagine that? Four guys that loved a friend so dearly that they were willing to do crazy things. And what does that look like in your life? Do you do anything crazy for Jesus? Because I think what, what happens is sometimes we, sorry, my camera guys, I, I move around a lot, my bad. Sometimes we get so stuck in our ruts and routines. And we're like, ah, I don't know if I could say this. I don't know if I can do this because what would people think? And we've got the wrong people in mind. Sometimes we're more worried about what the crowd will say than what our Jesus will do. So my challenge is you for today. As you hear the word of God, number one, are you saved? Who do you say Jesus is? Do you believe that Jesus is Lord? Or if you know Jesus, man, what is God doing in and through you? Because Jesus says, if you have enough faith in you, as small as a mustard seed, that you can move mountains. You know what that mountain might be? It might be greed or lust or just self-brokenness in somebody. That you could be the love of Christ to somebody that they could experience Jesus because of you. And that mountain could be sin. And you could help remove that mountain. And you could share the love of Jesus Christ with somebody. Because every one of us in this room, God has commanded us to go and make disciples. And the verb is not go, the verb is make. So as you live your life, you you be a follower of Jesus. You make disciples. And what that shows and, and sees and pours out into this world is you just be you. But you be you as you follow Jesus. You love like him. You look like him. You talk like him, you act like him, and the more you're in the word of God, the more the word of God is going to come out of you. Man, trust what the Bible says. So let's get to that. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Mark was the first circulating letter that was sent out, the first disciple that sent the good news out to people. And so when people saw this, they were, hold on, they're like, hold on, we, we've heard about this. We've, we've seen this actually happen in, in real life. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. It says, when he, this is Jesus, when he entered Capernaum, again after some days, it was, it was reported that he was home. There was about three houses that Jesus circulated around. It was other people's homes, but he, he kind of called it his own, and he got to go and live there and take care of himself and rest. But it says it was reported that he was home, and so many people gathered together that there was no more room, not even in the doorway, and he was speaking the message to them. What Jesus had, no one else had ever had. It was the message of hope and love. Because for many of us, even today, in today's concept and context, we think of church as a place where this is all the the good people go. And the reality is this is just a, a, a place to gather for broken people to come and experience the love of Jesus Christ. So it don't matter what you've been through or what you're going through, this is the place for all of us. It don't matter if we're black, white, red, yellow, Cajun, Alabama fans, everybody is accepted in this place. 
I saw that scarlet letter back there. (laughs) This is a place of brokenness. But have we lost sight of that? Do we forget our sin, our transgressions? Do we forget the things that we've been through? Because every one of us, our goodness is like a filthy rag in front of our holy God. But when we know Jesus, oh, God does not look at us through our sin. Because our sin is no more. God looks at us through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We forget that, though, when we see people. We see a lost person, and we're like, how dare they act like this? Lost people, guess what they're going to act like? Lost. Hey, maybe you're in this room, you've never given your heart and your life to Jesus. You might think, I am not good enough. But can I tell you that God made you in his image? And what God made, he said, it is good. Now, our sin and our brokenness is filthy. But Jesus just wants us. He wants us to come to him and lay down our lives for him because that's what he did for us. So it doesn't matter what you've experienced. Whether you're a liar, a murderer, an adulterer, or just somebody that messed up one little time, God just wants us and our sin to let him know of who he is. So who do you say that Jesus is? Let's get back to the story. Mark chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. Verse 3, it says, Then they came to him bringing a paralytic carried by four men. So remember, think about our, our guys bringing this kid around in the burrito. They came to bring him this paralytic and carried by these four men. Since they were not able to bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above where he was. Can you imagine that? Sitting in a house and all of a sudden dirt and all this stuff starts cracking and coming down because back in the day what they would do is when they built these houses, they they just kind of put thatch roof and straw and all this stuff on the top. And then they would coat it with mud and it would become clay and hard as a brick. And people would use the top of their houses as, as these patios. And they would just hang out. Typically there were these stairs that went around each house. But these guys knew that they wanted to bring their friend to Jesus. Not just be on the outside and just be a spectator, but they wanted to be a part of this. And so when are you willing to remove yourself from the crowd and become a part of the story? Because God is still in the miracle working business. So listen, Since they were not able to bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above where he was. And when they had broken through, they lowered the mat on which the paralytic was lying. Seeing their faith, Jesus told the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. But some of the scribes were sitting there and they were thinking to themselves, Why does he speak like this? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And right away, Jesus understood in the spirit that they were thinking like this within themselves. And he said to them, can you imagine this? You ever had those thoughts about people and all of a sudden, what if they would reply to your thought? It would be completely embarrassing. I don't want people to know what's going through my mind, especially if you eat at somebody's house that don't know how to cook. But all these thoughts were going through their minds. They doubted who Jesus was. And they're honestly, they're mocking him. Why are you thinking these things? This is Jesus. He says, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. He told the paralytic, hey, I tell you, get up, pick up your mat, and go home. And immediately he got up, picked up the mat, and went out in front of everyone. As a result, they were astounded and gave glory to God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Our God is still in the miracle-working business. Sin Sin is the reference here is when you see the the, the paralytic. Because everywhere we see there are people that are hurting and broken. And honestly, they are crippled by sin. 
They need Jesus. In fact, we need Jesus. We need to be re- re- reminded daily that the gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. That Jesus lived, he died, and he rose again for us. We need to remind ourselves because hopefully the more we, re- we remind ourselves is we're going to want to go and be like these four men and bring our people, our friends, our family that are crippled by sin to the feet of Jesus. But when Jesus saw what they did because of their faith, the friend was healed. See, Jesus didn't just deal with the physical need. He said to them, your sins are forgiven. And that's where the scribes were like, whoa, listen, you you can't say that because what you're saying can only be done by God. And Jesus sets the tone for us. Because he says, I am the son of man. This is a reference back to Daniel chapter 7. The ancient of days, the son of man, the one, the creator, the one that will be worshipped by thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people. Jesus is setting the tone for them to know that he is God. Because nobody has the power to do this but God alone. But who do you say that Jesus is? What is it that you tell others about him? See, what we do is we experience one of the first things here in the New Testament where a man walks for the very first time. How did this happen? How did this man walk? He walked because he was healed by Jesus. Action led to faith and faith led to trust. See, Jesus got to the real issue, and this real issue was sin. And that's why he said, son, your sins are forgiven. People that are all around us are dying and going to hell. They're letting little small consequences and and little small situations in their life just lead them to a life of hopelessness. But do we come to them and share with them the good news of Jesus Christ? Because honestly, too many of us, we're not like these four friends. We're more like the spectators, the crowd. We're sitting back watching everything, and we know the story, but we're not living it out. And we've got to somehow move over to this understanding that, hey, we're not just this spectator, but we're a part of the story. We are just like these four friends. Now, listen, if you are like this paralytic, meaning you are somebody that is broken with sin, you've never called on the name of Jesus, you think you're just not good enough, Jesus loves you. Jesus died on the cross for you. Nothing you have done, will do, or in the future, anything, nothing will keep you from the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus absolutely loves you. This is something we have to remind ourselves every day. See, the the Pharisees, they call out and they're like, well, man, this is blasphemy. You can't do this. Only God can do this. They think this is irreverent, profane. But they're doing this because any time the crowds would gather and they would come and they would hear anybody say anything, picture this. Like, let's put it in today's context of you get this Cajun dude comes to you and starts talking to you. And guess what? Not all of us need subtitles, right? I can talk. Like, I actually can wear clothes and not just have overalls. A little segue is the dude Bruce from Swamp People's from my hometown. And so we don't really... uh, all dress like that. You know, we wear shirts, we cover our bodies, and we don't all wrestle with alligators, nothing like that. But if I were to come to you and say, hey, guys, repent. Repent. Jesus is coming. If we're going to be like a scribe, what we're going to say, huh, I can't believe he's talking about all those lost people. But we've got to remind ourselves to be no different than the Pharisees. We don't want to look like them. We don't want to act like them. We don't want to respond like they did. But when we hear the message of Christ, we need to soak it up for ourselves. Instead of sitting here thinking, oh, yeah, you're right, man. He's talking about for those other people. Man, it's for us. It's for the hearers. Because our hope is that we're going to take this message in. And when we leave these walls, we're entering the mission field. That we're going to go wherever it is, whether our house our neighborhood, our jobs, our schools, our friends' homes, 
we're going to tell them the message of hope. See, 18 years of my life, I knew religion. Any of y'all like that? See, I thought, well, if, I, if I'm just a good enough person, everything's going to be okay. The reality was I was lost. I was probably one of the most religious people you could know. I did all the things that I was supposed to do. But see, at 18 years old, I started working at a pizza place and a waitress, beautiful girl, she would smile from ear to ear. She had something that I desperately wanted. It was joy. It didn't matter the situation, she was always happy. In a bad time, she would praise Jesus. In a good time, she would praise Jesus. We went on a date, and she quickly told me, she said, look, I'm not interested in a relationship with a lost boy. And I'm like, who are you to judge me? I knew, I'm like, she's way better than I am. You can't say that. And she said, look, hey, I'd love to be friends. I'd love to hang out with you. We can go on dates. But she said, I'm not, I'm not interested in a relationship with somebody that doesn't know Jesus. I said, I know Jesus. Brought her to church with me. She said, I am never going back to your church. <laughs> she said, the gospel was never even talked about. See, I went to a place that was all religion. It had nothing to do with the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ. It was about, as long as you do all these things, you're good. Went to church with her and my life was radically changed. People of God started loving on me and showing me by example what it means to look like Jesus and love like Jesus. And daily she started sharing the gospel with me. One person, one person in my life loved me enough to tell me the good news. Now the reality is there are consequences if you don't put your faith and trust in Jesus. And she told me that. But she did it in a loving way. It was like these four friends that brought their friends to Jesus. Who in your life do you need to bring to Jesus? Who in your life do you need to do some crazy things? Maybe tear the roof off of a house. Now remember, they didn't go and stop and get a committee meeting. They didn't get, a, get, get approval by the state for a building code or whatever. You know, they, they said, our friend is paralyzed and he needs to be healed. He needs to experience Jesus. Because remember, we can't taste that chocolate donut unless we eat it. How many of your friends just need to taste and see and experience Jesus? And you... You, as a follower of Christ, you can be the hands and feet of Christ. You can carry the beggars. You can carry the ones that need the most healing. And let them see Jesus in you, through you. And don't just do good things. I think that's the, one of the worst lies we've ever bought into in society. We can't just look good, act good. We need to do it and tell people that it's because of Jesus Christ. See, Scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing of the Word of God. I got saved because a girl led me to Jesus. I go and I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to tons of people because somebody was willing to tell me about Jesus. I had some amazing people in my church that started discipling me and mentoring me and just bringing me with, to, bringing with, bringing me with them on visits, bringing me with them to their work out to eat and I did life with them because honestly Matthew 28 19 in the correct context and in, in Greek it says as you go the verb is make make disciples so as we live our life as we eat as we watch a football game as we as we just do life we talk to people about Jesus we show them how, how, how we respond, how we act and do these things whether it's a good situation or a bad situation we show them this is what it looks like to love Jesus. That's what the friends did. Four friends gathered together, brought their friend to Jesus. And Jesus does the saving work. Don't ever be discouraged if you bring somebody to the feet of Jesus and they don't get saved. It's not your job. Your job is to do the carrying and do the telling. But don't become like the Pharisees. See, the Pharisees and scribes, they, they mocked Jesus. They, they didn't want to accept the message themselves. See, that's why Jesus comes on the scene and he says, look, I am the, the, the son of man. 
And this re- reference to, to Daniel 7 is trying to show them through the Old Testament, of like, look, I am the one. So again, who do you say that Jesus is? When you gather, is it always like, I can't believe they're talking about this person? Or do you soak up the information and let the gospel get a hold of your heart? Listen to this story. It says, the church of Mr. Samuel Colgate, a great American businessman, he was a member, and he entered into an agreement to make special prayer for the conversion of sinners. So this guy, Sam Colgate, got his people in his church. Hey, guys, let's start praying for lost people. For days they prayed earnestly. One day, applicants for church membership were invited to present themselves. They'd been praying for them. Now they're here. A woman came forward, heartbroken. She told her story of what a sinner she had been and how God had forgiven her for Christ's sake. And she wished to slip into a corner of the church and have fellowship of God's people as she made the start for heaven. Silence was oppressive. Nobody said a word. Then a member arose and moved that action on the application be postponed. You know, she wasn't one of our people. Mr. Colgate arose and said in substance, I guess we made a blunder when we asked God to save sinners. We did not specify what kind. I think we had all better ask God to forgive us for not specifying what kind of sinner we want saved. He probably didn't understand what we wanted. They all saw the point, and the woman was received into the fellowship. Can I be honest with you? At 18 years old, when I started going to church with my co-worker, people told her the stories of how much of a sinner I was. People said, don't you dare be associated with this young man. Thank you, God, I'm not the person I was. Jesus changes. The gospel transformed my heart, my life. Who oh, cannot believe I'm a preacher of the gospel. All my people I went to high school with cannot believe I'm a preacher of the gospel. My brother Matt can testify to that as well. None of us are good enough when it comes to man's standards. But you know the funny thing? See, men, women, we judge a person by the outer appearance, but God looks at the heart. And see, Jesus came to save all. Let me, let me make sure you understand this understanding. When I say all, it's all people, all as in A-L-L, all people can come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. All people can repent of their sin. All people, whether black, red, wet, red, yellow, white, we're all made in God's image. So everybody on this earth has the imprint of God on their heart. And you have the ability to go and tell somebody the good news. Have you received the good news? It doesn't matter how broken you are. God can heal you and restore you. Some of us, we know Jesus, but we we don't do anything for the gospel because we're scared because of our sins. You know, Jesus says your sin is buried on the ocean floor. Jesus says your sin is as far as the east is from the west. God loves you. God loves you where you are. All you have to do is just surrender your life to him. So, have you been saved? Have you given your heart and your life to Jesus Christ? Because if not, I want to encourage you. We're going to sing a few songs, and I want you to, when we, after we pray, if you know that you're a sinner, and you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, come talk to Brother Matt, come talk to me, I'll, I'll be up here as well. All you have to do is say, what must I do to be saved? And we would love to talk to you about that. See, Jesus says in Romans 10, 9, well, Paul says it because this is what Jesus showed and portrayed. Romans 10, 9, it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. Don't matter what you look like, don't matter how much you give, don't matter how much you come to church, you got to get to a point where you understand and know you're lost and your sin is keeping you from God. 
But that's why God sent Jesus to die on the cross for you. All people. Please hear this. That means it doesn't matter who the worst person in this town is. They are, have been made in the image of God, and they need to know Jesus. How will it look like if you could help bring them to the feet of Jesus? And that might mean you're going to have to do some crazy things. Go to some crazy places and climb on some crazy roofs. Make sure you have some rope, a shovel, and you're ready to dig a hole in somebody's roof. You're ready to lower somebody down to the feet of Jesus. Because people need to get saved. Because they're going to spend eternity separated from God. So you got two choices today. You either need to repent of your sin and get saved. Let your faith become public that you told the church, you follow through with baptism, it doesn't save you, but it shows people that I am a follower of Jesus. Or, if you are saved, you need to start praying and bringing people to the feet of Jesus. I believe the power of prayer changes lives. So what's your choice going to be today? If you're not saved, get saved today. Give your heart to Jesus. God loves you. You don't need to change anything up to get saved. But when you come to saving faith in Christ, your life radically changes. I am not who I was. Thank you, Jesus, for that. And when God sees me, he doesn't see anything of my past. He sees me through the righteousness, righteousness of Jesus Christ. We've got a lot of empty seats in this place. Next week, tomorrow, you can start talking to people and asking people about Jesus as you do your life. Let's pray. God, I want to thank you for your love. God, I thank you that you love us in spite of our flaws. God, it blows me away. It amazes me that you use crooked sticks to make straight lines. God, I'm asking that if there's anybody in this room that does not know you as Lord and Savior, God, you would call them to salvation. God, you would give them the courage to respond to the gospel message. God, you would restore their brokenness. God, I also pray that if there's anybody in this room that they know you, but they haven't never shared their faith, God, on a regular basis, God, I pray you would give them a desire to spread the good news. God, do a work. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you stand, please? There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood comes flowing down at the cross at the cross I surrender my life I'm in all of you I'm in all of you where your love ran red and my sin washed white I'm in all to you I owe all to you a place where sin and shame are powerless where my heart has peace with God and forgiveness where all the love I've ever found 
comes like a flood, comes flowing down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in all of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you. I owe all to you. Here my hope is found. Here on holy ground. Here I bow down. Here I bow down. Here arms open wide. Here you save my life. Here I bow down. Here I bow at the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you, I'm in all of you, where your love ran red and my sin washed white. I owe all to you, I owe all to you. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in all of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white. I owe all to you. I owe all to you. I owe all to you. I owe all to you, Jesus. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for dying on the cross for sins, dear Lord. Just thank you for being a forgiving, loving God, dear Lord, and forgiving us when we do fail you, dear Lord. Dear Lord, I just thank you for this message, dear Lord, that Brother Jay has brought us through it today, dear Lord. I just pray, dear Lord, that we would follow it, dear Lord, and we would just do your will, dear Lord. And if there was anybody here convicted, dear Lord, that they won't get any rest until they come to you, dear Lord. And I pray that we would just go out, dear Lord, and just win the loss for you. Just tell people about you, dear Lord, as Brother Jay told us. Dear Lord, I just um, pray for this offering, dear Lord, and just let us use it for the honor and glory for you. In the Lord Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. When we last left As the Fun Turns, Les Gibbers had just received a gift from the Double Up Twins, the original can of Give, the Miracle Spray. Let's see if it has worked on Les and Squeaky. Hello! Come in! Who is it? It is Les and Squeaky again. Outside. Well, hello. Hello. A gift for you. I love presents! Oh, oh sister! What the? Oh, 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 to double up our gift next Sunday. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Squeaky oh, Les. Oh, my oh, goodness. Thanks, oh, my day. Will Squeaky ever get her voice fixed so she can talk like a regular human being, or will she continue sounding like a dog toy? Now that Les will be giving to the building fund, will he stop moping, keep his finger out of his mouth, and get a decent haircut? Will B find enough change in her big old purse to give to the building fund each week, or will she just borrow from her sister Minnie? If Minnie doesn't quit chewing gum so much, will she have to go to the dentist and get dentures? And what will be your decision? Will you double up next week on your giving, or perhaps start giving to the building fund, or will you just chew double mint gum? Double your treasure, double your gift, 
It's the right, it's the right, the right thing to do. On Double Up Sunday, it's a chance to double your treasure and double your gift. On Double Up, Double Up, Double Up Day. All right, give my hand. <laughs> All right. All right, this has just been a fun way to, to uh, put a little new energy into our uh, building fund. We are uh, under 600000 um, left on that, so, th so that, that, that's exciting news. Uh, our, remember, our goal is to get the building paid off by the end of uh, 2020, so that's coming up soon. So just, uh, this is all about just getting people to be involved. As a reminder... The, uh, the Giver Sisters are here, and I think the twins are here, yeah, and different folks are at the doors. They're going to give everybody a, a package of double mint gum for you to, to, to remember uh, to give next week. Uh, we'll have a special time at the end of the service uh, where everyone can bring their, their, their gifts uh, to the front, as we've done it for missions, offerings, and things in the past. So that'll be a fun th time to do that. It's an exciting time. So uh, next week is our family worship day, so all the kids um, will be in, in the uh, service with us. Um, so uh, it's, we're just looking forward to it. It's going to be a great, great day. Um, I, I, uh, I think uh, Squeaky's here, too. Is Squeaky here as well? Did she come? I don't hear her. Squeaky. There she, there she is. There's Squeaky. Uh, Les is at the beach, so I hope he put something on the head of his so uh, he doesn't get burned. So we'll see. Maybe he'll come back with a haircut. So, But uh, anyhow, it's a fun, fun day. Uh, thank you so much for being with us uh, this day. Jay, thank you so much for sharing. Thanks for bringing Caleb with you, his son. Uh, so uh, we really thank you, appreciate the work that you do doing uh, in the state. And uh, I know that uh, I've never seen uh, Matt as, ex as excited as he was to know, you know, when he got to hear you and, and, and be part of what's going on. So there's this excitement, appreciate the, the teamwork you all are doing together. So that's, that's great, reaching kids for Christ. All right, let's stand, please, and we'll be dismissed with this final chorus together. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise, O oh Lord. I'm not